My name is Catherine Richardson. I'm a professor at the University of Copenhagen. I'm actually trained as a biological oceanographer, but the last 30 years or so, I've been working in earth system science, and that's been my road into global sustainability. So I'm also the leader of the Sustainability Science Center at the University of Copenhagen. Well, I think my science is really interesting because my science is all about interactions. It's a, a big research project in, in the ocean outside of, of Iceland, and it looks at the interactions between ocean, climate change, nature, and on Iceland itself, it also looks at the relationship between people and climate and nature. So it focuses on interactions, and that's what I think the journal should be about. But I have another interest that I also think is very, very relevant for the journal, and that is trying to fast track the results that we have as scientists into societal transformation. Very few of us actually stop and think, and how can my results actually, if they could be upscaled, whatever, how could they contribute to societal transformation that will bring us closer to sustainable development? The journal Global Sustainability is a very, very interesting journal because it nothing is excluded we we look at interactions so if you if you come with a paper we don't really care where your starting point is your end point has to be that whatever you're proposing whatever result you have whatever thoughts you have on this topic should somehow be applicable to the transformation that societies need to undergo in order to achieve sustainable development what excites me most about this journal is the fact that it does give scientists an outlet for studies that, that are a little untraditional, that they don't, they don't deal with a specific um, topic. We've been, we've been in, in natural science, or at least in, in, in natural history, since the, since the time of Newton. We've been spending all our time and energy describing living and non-living things in the universe. And, and you don't understand the universe or any other system. You don't understand your body by understanding about what's a heart, what's a, what's a liver, what's a, what's a brain. We will only understand a person when we understand the interactions between all the different parts. And we haven't been looking enough at interactions. And this journal gives us the opportunity to, to study, advertise, and report results on those interactions. A good global sustainability paper is one that doesn't just stop at describing a problem or it doesn't just present a vision for what the future should look like but it actually takes its starting point is in what do we actually have here that we could that could potentially contribute to a sustainable development a more sustainable development and what what's missing what are the barriers for using this particular piece of knowledge for making a better world. There are many reasons why authors should choose to, to publish in global sustainability. One, of course, is the fact that it's open access, but, but more than that, it's because it's a, it is a place, it, it, oper it provides a unique opportunity to, to publish about interactions, to publish about, um, not about describing things, but about changing things. I believe the most important Thing about open access publishing is that it does give scientists from around the world, both the global north and the global south, access to new information and access to the ability to bring their results to the rest of the world. I think the greatest challenge facing the sustainability field today is the societal narrative around it. We keep talking about the fact that we need solutions, and usually these solutions are technical. But in fact, complex adaptive systems like the Earth system, which is our ecosystem, or even you can bring it down to your family. Your family's also a complex adaptive system. And if your family's dysfunctional, you don't just fix it with a big solution. You do many small things, and the small things that seem to bring you closer to the direction you want to go, you do a little bit more of. And that's the way I think we need to be put, uh, approaching sustainability as well. We can't expect technology on its own to bring us to sustainable development. We have to look at 
technology, but how we use it. So it's our behavior, both collective and, and individual. We have to change our economic and finance system so it can pay to do what we know we need to do. We have to change our governance systems and we have to focus on capacity building. All of these topics are relevant for global sustainability.